It might seem like the quality of salt mix is mission critical, and it certainly is a hotly debated topic in reefing. But in relation to today's topic, will a bad salt mix pollute the tank? Will a good one avoid that? If dilution or water changes is such a useful tool, is what salt mix I use a major factor in that effectiveness? Quick answer is don't spend a lot of time worrying about what salt mix to use. Some are certainly better than others, but most are all what I'd classify as good enough from a contaminant perspective. That's the answer 80% of the time, but there's always a bigger picture worth contemplating. The primary reason we suggest that which salt you use isn't a huge concern in relation to today's topic of pollution or contaminants is this. If a salt is good enough to start a tank or fill it 100% with, meaning all of the salt water in the tank was produced using that salt, then a small periodic water change or dilution with itself is typically not going to pollute the tank to a major degree. Diluting something with itself is a neutral move. If a less than ideal salt mix contained an undesirable level of lithium, boron, or some other element, a water change of water with water made from the same salt mix will presumably have the same level as that contaminant and won't elevate, reduce, or dilute it no matter how much water you change. However, this is one of the reasons why picking a brand of salt you believe in and sticking with it is wise. These are the 20% caveats that where a less than ideal salt can make things worse. One is the bioaccumulation in living tissue. Super common to ICP test the tank and find that there's no elevated toxins, but the corals don't look good. One of the common reasons is because those toxins have actually been removed by the coral and now in its tissue where it's causing the problem. This takes a while to develop and it isn't an easy problem to fix. Way better to just reduce the undesirable sources of introduction. In this case, this is why ICP testing the freshly mixed salt water is a better way to identify the quality of the salt mix than testing the tank itself. If you did ICP test all the salts, you'll find that none of them emulate natural seawater exactly. It's just an impracticality. Most will have at least one questionable element level, but none should have what is considered actually toxic. I do not believe what salt you select will make or break your tank, but some salts are absolutely better than others. It would be odd if that wasn't the case. They don't all follow the same exact recipe or formula. They don't all use the same raw materials. There is actually a strong financial pressure to use raw materials that are found in your own country, or at least nearby, which are all various degrees of quality. In fact, not necessarily good or bad, but the biggest difference will often be between US-made salts like Instant Ocean and Brightwell and European salts like HW, Aquaforce, and Nios, just due to being other sides of the planet and where they get the raw materials from. ICP testing is realistically the best solution for the average reefer who wants to make an informed decision about the quality of both the formula used to create the salt and the impurities, intentional or an unintentional. However, you're not going to test for them all. That's just too expensive. The right salt is realistically going to be a mix of research, referrals, results, and a belief that a supplier has the capability of delivering on their claims. ICP, an optional confirmation of those results and a window into why it works or doesn't. For those of you who want to know, historically the two salts that we've used the most in the tanks here at BRS are HW Marine Mixed Reefer and Tropic Marine Pro Reef. HW was predominantly based on positive reports and referrals and the results we had using it. The Pro Reef based on a series of experiments in BRS TV Investigates episodes we did back in 2019. Results and testing, equally valuable in four methods of picking a salt. It's likely we'll repeat a couple of those salt tests for 52SC's salt mixing and water change episode to see what's changed and add in a few entries like Aquaforest and Nios. Nios in particular is interesting because I was told they designed the salt specifically to beat our tests. I feel like I need to take that bait. Another reason to retest them is simply that was five years ago. Manufacturers and all their suppliers make changes all the time. I anticipate similar results as last time, but there's only one way to know, and that's keep that data up to date. The only other caveat where a salt mix could be a major pollutant contributor is the bad batch, meaning some element or toxin was grossly elevated in the salt and hitting that definition of pollution where it has harmful or poisonous effects on the tank. I share this because toxins in salt mixes or bad batches are something that's often a topic of concern when reefers run into issues with their tanks, but I bet only one out of every 10,000 times that it's brought up, it ends up being the actual true cause. However, unmitigated pollutants from foods, tap water, and additives are accumulative challenges in 100% of tanks. The reason salt mixes are often brought up instead is it's human nature to look at something I did recently as the cause. Water changes are often inherently recently. Dosing two-part and feeding food is also inherently recent, but so frequent and prolonged that it seems impossible. Frankly, it takes a considerable amount of knowledge and application of that knowledge to consider the accumulative effects of something we started dosing daily 12 to 18 months ago. 
On top of that, fading or a single dose of two part is what I'd characterize as a low stress event. But even with ideal water, changing that water, temperature, air exposure, pH, disturbed sand, or other cleaning events, or medias change during a water change is a stress event. One that healthy corals skip over without a beat, but may push already stressed corals over the edge. That said, they do happen from time to time, and we will dive deeper into the bad batch topic in our salt mix or making artificial seawater episode of 52SE, but my experience is most of these events are just the result of not mixing the salt long enough at the factory to get all the elements or individual salt grains homogeneously mixed. If it isn't adequately mixed, some elements end up in the elevated or deficient pockets. Good news is this will typically show up with a hobby grade calcium, alkalinity, or magnesium test kit, so you can test for it at home. I'd consider it wise to nearly mandatory to test the first batch of salt made from every box, at least alkalinity, which is the easiest. Once the accuracy of the test kit, testing procedure, and reasonable expectations for the salt are considered, being within 10% of what's stated on the box is a reasonable expectation. If bad batches are something that keeps you up at night, some reefers will ICP test the first batch of salt from every new box for peace of mind. That seems a bit aggressive to me, but a way to get similar levels of confidence at a lower cost is next time your preferred salt is on sale, pick up a year or two's worth of salt at a time. Salt has a high probability of being from the same manufacturing run using the same raw materials. ICP test the first batch of salt water you mix up and know for sure that you're good. The savings from buying salt pays for the ICP, and if you only did this every two years, you would only have to do it five times in a decade. But know that you're now part of a group that will never worry about the quality or safety of their salt mix on a whole variety of fronts. However, next is something that ICP is not great for, pollutants from hands and the surrounding air. 